Hey everybody, today I want to show you my favorite approach for thin conjunctiva glaucoma surgery with an ab interno zen. And I really like this approach because patients on chemotherapy, patients on different kind of immunosuppressants, uh, people with thin conjunctiva, more senior patients, uh, these patients, their glaucoma surgery sometimes could give you a little bit more concern with suturing. And uh, with this approach, I feel like there's minimal sutures and their blebs last a really long time. And I think that's because uh, perhaps senior age, uh, sometimes people have built-in anti-metabolites with, uh, so to speak, with their, with their chemotherapy and uh, malnutrition, Crohn's disease, uh, these, these higher risk patients, they actually do pretty well with this uh, ab internal zen procedure uh, because their, their blebs last so long. And so if we can get um, a zen stent, you know, placed uh, in the superior part of their conjunctiva, a lot of times it will just last forever. And uh, that's great because these patients sometimes have higher risk for, for other issues with, with many sutures and, and those kinds of things. So this patient has a thin conjunctiva. He's got a liver transplant. He's on mycophenolate, Celsept, and tacrolimus. And that combination should make him a pretty good, you know, bleb durability uh, kind of patient and kind of case. So let's jump into the steps for my approach. Um, what I've done so far is two traction sutures. Both those sutures are placed kind of nasally or supranasally. This is a right eye. And I use adovicral with a spatulated uh, suture, and I do those uh, those Q knots. And what those those Q knots do is allow me to kind of have no slippage of the traction suture, so that uh, there's no s seesawing of the suture. That means with my uh, with my traction suture holding, with my mosquito clamp holding the the sutures, there won't be any slippage. So. If so if a suture breaks, I'll still have three strands because there's four holding it, and that'll give me plenty of traction as I place the Zen. And that's why I went to, to two traction sutures instead of one. Just the reliability when you're, when you're transscleral with your Zen, you really want to have that confidence of good counter traction in a solid chamber. And this does it for me. Uh, it just makes it easy for me, and that's, that's why I like the two traction sutures. So, I think we published that in Glaucoma Today about five years ago in 2018. So here we are placing the Zen, uh, going into as close to the 12 o'clock position as I can. Um, I've tried to increase exposure here to get the best angulation through the 1.8 millimeter wound and uh, go into that, that superior space. I'm just feeling my way through the angle and uh, slowly kind of twisting and progressing through the sclera until I can see the tip of the injector uh, er kind of emerge through the sclera. At that point, um, I've already inked the tip of the Zen, nice tip from Costa Sicus, our rep here uh, with Allergan. And so as I emerge through the sclera, I should be able to kind of see the metal tip and then uh, do my two-handed release. Another reason I like the two traction sutures is with one finger, I can increase the counter traction and with two hands, I can gently guide and feel my way through. Here we are. Tip of is uh, emerging through the sclera. I probably have about a two millimeter tunnel uh, in the sclera at this point. But I am uh, potentially in sub tenon space, maybe a little bit into tenons in this case. I did inject some helon already in the, uh, in the space. And there comes the Zen. You can see the nice ink on the Zen shows us uh, where it's located and where it's emerging, and I'll gently kind of watch that position as I as I retreat and retract uh, the injector. There's always a little bit of a curve, a learning curve at this point when you retreat and retract. You want to leave uh, a few millimeters in the conge or sub tenon space. Uh, in this approach, at least, uh, certainly fill the tunnel and then have you know a millimeter millimeter and a half of Zen stent in the anterior chamber, hopefully right in the angle. We'll go ahead and take a look here and see our placement. I think it's a tough view in this case because of uh, the pigmentation of the angle. 
but I did appreciate the Zen here, and I could see it kind of poking and looking at me right at this point, so I'm very happy with its placement. So with the Zen place now, we'll go ahead and kind of uh, approach to get the bleb ready. And in order to prepare the bleb, I go ahead and suture my semi-open approach uh, conjunctival incision, um, where I went below tenons to do the dissection that you already saw. I do like primary needling in these cases, so I do needling before placement of the Zen, which I did with the iris sweep in this case. And then after I place the Zen, if I'm not satisfied that um, it's got enough uh, of a formed bleb area, I'll go ahead and needle again with the iris sweep or even, you know, a needle or something to make sure I'm happy. Here. All right, with the sutures placed and the, the system closed, so to speak, now we can kind of go ahead and get ready for mitomycin. Uh, which we've just injected here. Of course, I'm pushing the mito away from the limbus, sparing those uh, limbal stem cells from the mitomycin exposure, and trying to push the mitomycin posteriorly where we want drainage uh, from our aqueous into the bleb and maintaining that, that long term. Okay, at this point, we're pretty happy. Things have gone pretty well. We have the Zen uh, placed where we want it. We've got a nice bleb uh, formed and forming uh, with mitomycin applied. So now we just need to uh, wash out our anterior chamber from the viscoelastic and uh, seal our incisions, uh, check our final placement one more time, and then make sure, make sure that we're looking pretty good here. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I hope this uh, really helps your thin conjunctival uh, glaucoma surgery patients.